Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's worldwide privacy tour yesterday included Harry putting an intimate chat with the trauma therapist, Dr. Gabo Mate, online to be watched by millions for $60 a head. Who, who does that? Now, the whole exercise was really to flog Harry's book Spare about how bad the royal family had been to him. And Mate was very quick to agree that Harry did have mental health troubles from all that, including troubles that Harry even thought, had not even thought of himself. Mate said, whether you like it or not, I've diagnosed you with ADD. You can agree or disagree. I don't see a disease. I see it as a normal response to abnormal stress. And Harry just says, uh, OK. Joining me from London each week is commentator and writer Esther Kraku. Esther, always great to talk to you. What did you make of this real-time therapy session from this very private man? Well, it was... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how you, you get privacy. You have to sell tickets to, uh, to people to watch you talk about how traumatized you are. Uh, but, it, you know, it was, it was quite an uncomfortable uh, interview, m mainly because you could see sort of where the issues with Harry and his delusions and his mental health really stem from. It's being surrounded by people like Gabo Mate, who constantly reassert and, and, and reaffirm all the crazy delusions that he has in his mind, like he is some sort of traumatized victim, even though he grew up literally as a prince. Um, and, and there were so many telling moments in, in in that particular interview. But I think that the, the larger issue is the fact that Prince Harry has to constantly talk about how much of a better place he's in and how much he's healed. It's like those people that constantly tell you how happy they are. Well, happy people don't have to tell you how happy they are. They're just happy. And everyone else is seeing this sort of, you know, really deeply troubled man, but he's so convinced that he's been cured. And he has all these people in Hollywood and the Gabo Mates just egging him on and, and telling him how, how healed he is because he spends hours a day at a therapist's office in Hollywood. I think you make a good point because, you know, if he's so happy, how come he's estranged from his family? Uh, she's estranged from her family. Uh, they've become a laughing stock around the world. Uh, and in fact, um, you know, whatever, whoever's therapizing him, giving him therapy, wallowing in it seems to have cost him a mark because he said, um, he said, me and my wife, we do the best we can as parents, learning from our own past and being able to grow together to provide for our kids and be able to break that cycle. He says, and it's not easy and you certainly don't make friends in the process in the short term. Why would that be? Well, you know, Actually, it's really weird. I, I never thought I'd have to say this, but turning on your family does have a way of, of, of breeding enemies. Uh, but I, I think the, the really telling issue here is the fact that he's clearly not a very happy man. Happy people don't do this. Happy people don't sell secrets about their families and, and pocket $100 million from Netflix to constantly whinge about their lives. This is not what happy people do. Uh, but because he's surrounded by people in this echo chamber of his, him and Megan's, you know, he really doesn't understand how the rest of the world views what he's doing. Yeah, look, look. clearly the way he's acting, he has been traumatised, he is a damaged person. I got all that. But I just think the way he's going about it, traumatising other people, like his own family, is not really uh, smart or nice. And I have to say, uh, boasting about his drug use has been quite helpful. Well, the psychologist in our warning that may be OK for him, but not for more vulnerable people uh, listening. That could be disastrous. I just... I look, uh, the whole thing is a mess. Esther... Uh, Britain's former health minister, Matt Hancock, has had 100,000 of his WhatsApp messages leaked to the media covering his response to the COVID pandemic. Look, it's been a, just a stunning breach of his, uh, his privacy. It includes texts between him and then, uh, and then Prime Minister Boris Johnson. What does all this add up to? 100,000 messages. What does it add up to? What picture is it saying? Well, it just revealed what most of the public suspected with regards to how actual decisions were made uh, by government officials during COVID with regards to you know, the lockdown policies and all of that. And it, there was just a, such a callous disregard for, for the public. I mean, there were so, so many telling moments in sort of the WhatsApp revelations where Matt Hancock was talking about scaring the pants off the public um, to, to keep them compliant with COVID uh, le legislation, even though it wasn't actually rooted in any sort of scientific facts or, you know, his, his refusal to get, uh, you know, uh, care home, people that live in care homes uh, routinely tested for COVID and all these sort of government failures that really come down to just very callous WhatsApp messages. He clearly had very little regard for the public. He just played the victim the entire time. He didn't understand the outrage around what he described as heavy petting um, with, with regard to his affair um, that he, he was caught having in, in 
Westminster. I mean, it's, it's just completely ridiculous. Um, but, you know, the telling thing is there was a YouGov poll that actually demonstrated that the majority of people still agreed with or didn't think that COVID measures that were taken by the government went far enough. So even though people are disappointed and disgusted <laughs> and horrified, clearly the public, it's not, it's not been enough to sway public opinion. Oh, Esther, what on earth? I mean, we we had the same thing here, particularly in Victoria where I live. Uh, it's just, it, you know, the world's longest lockdowns to that point. And people were asking for more, some of them anyway. It's just been incredible. I mean, is it just uh, these messages show that uh, Matt Hancock, your health minister there, is an idiot? Or does it have a wider application that people really didn't mind the smack of authority, even though it turns out a lot of things we were told, like lockdowns work, they didn't really, not much. And if you get the vaccine, it'll stop you transmitting the virus. Not really that true. What, what, what else should we learn from this? I mean, we already established that Matt Hancock wasn't a very bright individual, um, considering that he left his post <laughs> as a sitting MP to go and eat kangaroo testicles on live television. But the wider implication oh, is you know, how these decisions were made. <laughs> how these decisions were made and how shutting down the democratic process and freedom of speech to empower you know a bunch of power hungry bureaucrats is really the worst thing that could possibly happen i mean we're still looking at the you know watching the repercussions of, of lockdown policies right now with you know high inflation rates and the energy crisis and all of that um but it really just goes to show that people really weren't that against being told what to do and it's very frightening how how easily people could cut out to oh, you know government or authoritarian power